In part one, we positioned the return line inside the tank's internal overflow. And now we want to position the drain line, which will involve a standpipe, or what is also commonly referred to as a Durso standpipe. This serves as a means of allowing the water to exit the overflow in a very quiet manner. It's secured through the bottom of the tank's internal overflow via a large one and a half inch diameter bulkhead that needs to be tightened from the underside of the tank, which is also a good reason to have large cutouts in the top of the stand for greater access with the wrench for tightening the bulkhead. And then sometimes, no matter how well thought out in advance, you just have to go to plan B. In this case, the wrench doesn't fit into the cutout on the underside of the stand, so I'll have to use the flat edge of a screwdriver and a hammer to tap the bulkhead's threaded collar into a tighter position. It's good to be flexible and prepared to make adjustments. Next step is to glue the hose barb adapter fittings into the drain and filter sump's bulkheads. In this case, we'll be using PVC cement to permanently secure the two adapter fittings into place. And once again, that coffee cup with boiling water in there serves the purpose by placing the end of the uh, flex drain line into it. That plastic will become soft and pliable. Then we'll slip over the hose barb nice and easily. And do the same thing with the other end of the hose. And it too will slip over the hose barb nice and easy. The flex drain hose is a little long, which is fine. It'll allow us the ability to remove the lid off the top of the uh, sump for changing out the sock. And I've twisted the flex hose or its natural twist so that the uh, uh, bend uh, is out of the way and not going to inhibit access into the sump or a protein skimmer. And at the same time, it doesn't um, force the lid for the filter to um, bend up or bow up at one end. All right, so now we've got the drain side uh, of the system in place. It's now time to go ahead and start on the uh, return side of it. So the choice of the water pump to use for my uh, coral frag tank originally started with a very high-end uh, German pump. Uh, I already have it. It's already paid for. It's here. But I decided not to use it, namely for two reasons. Um, one, I wasn't able to get it onto my website as a product that I could sell. And at the same time, it's a very high-end water pump, uh, which the price might deter a few people. Again, it's a quality pump. There's no question about that at all. I don't know if the people shopping on MyFishTank.com are potential customers for that high-end of product. But I'll tell you, the main reason that I switched to the pump that I'm going to put on here was because that's what the tank manufacturer carries. And if I'm having a product drop shipped by the tank manufacturer, it kind of makes things a whole lot easier if they're handling as many of those products that are involved in that sale as possible. In this particular case, I decided to go with the uh, current brand Eflux DC water pump. DC pumps, just like LED lights, are very efficient and seem to be the trend in the case of a, the aquarium industry these days. Um, current brand products um, are warranted quite well, not only by the company themselves, but also by the tank manufacturer. And so it behooves me to not only become familiar with products that I'm selling, um, but at the same time, it makes things a little bit easier 
as I said earlier, if what I'm selling, the entire order is being filled by one vendor. So in this particular case, this is the uh, E-Flux pump, DC pump, by uh, Current, the brand Current, which makes LED lights. They um, uh, used to be big into the fluorescent lights. They're now into the uh, LED lights. They're obviously spilling into water pumps. Uh, they've got a few other gizmos, I think, called the Loop, which allows their lights to interface with the water pump as well. Uh, I'm not going to get that carried away with that kind of stuff, but I am going to go ahead and not only try the E-Flux pump, um, but I'm also going to, assuming that it works out well, which I'll find out myself, and what better sale or response to a question involving a sale than to be able to say, it's the pump that I use. I'm familiar with it. It works. I'm comfortable with it. As opposed to, it's a nice expensive pump and I've never used it before. Um, so you should be happy though. Um, so in this particular case, this is a DC operated pump. It'll have a variable speed controller with it. Um, this one does, I believe, uh, this is the model um, 10, oh gosh, I can't remember the model, I'll have to look that up for you. Uh, it's the second, it's the middle of the three pumps they carry. It does 1,900 gallons an hour at its maximum. So it should be more than capable to run this system, of which a portion of this flow is going to be diverted over to uh, through the chiller and back into the sump. The balance of the flow will then go up into the tank. And I'm not looking to achieve all the water flow in the tank as a result of the water pump. We'll have another pump up there, an internal pump doing that. But I am going to be using this DC operated pump to drive the uh, sump down below. And another advantage is this pump can sit internally as well as externally. And in my case, I'm going to do it internally so I don't have to drill any holes down in the sump. So I need to assemble uh, the manifold here, of which I've kind of got it halfway put together, and I need to take it apart now and glue it together. So let's go ahead and do that. Hello, my name is Jim Stein, and I operate Aquarium Design, and I offer aquarium sales, installation, supplies, livestock, and aquarium maintenance in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Agora Hills, Calabasas, and Malibu, California. I specialize in custom aquariums ranging from freshwater, saltwater fish, living coral reef, and jellyfish display systems. I've been involved professionally and at many levels within the aquarium industry since 1987 and have been in business for myself since 1999. I've worked for many people and some for over 20 years now. My team can provide you with a unique range of aquarium systems ranging from rectangular in-wall to freestanding cylinders, bow fronts, and custom curved shapes. Additionally, we can offer a variety of aquascapes such as an artificial coral insert, coral skeleton decorations, custom-made branching rock structures, and themed environments such as this Jules Verne version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. With today's technology in energy efficient DC water pumps and LED lighting, operating costs are much lower. We can automate many of the maintenance features such as water replenishment, water changes, lighting schedule, including moonlight lighting, and even your general daily feedings. I can even install an app on your smartphone that will allow you to monitor, to be notified, to control and view your aquarium anywhere in the world. If you're looking for something truly unique, give me a call and let's discuss the possibilities of creating your aquatic dream. I'm knowledgeable, insured, and very reliable. My name is Jim Stein and you can reach me at 805-241-7140. I look forward to helping you achieve your aquatic dream.
GHL is widely recognized for the most reliable and future-proof aquarium controllers, dosers, and aquarium LED lighting on the market. Designed and manufactured in Germany, all GHL products are built with the highest quality and standards. The GHL Profilux 4 raises the bar to a whole new level. Featuring built-in Wi-Fi, the Profilux 4 can be connected to your network wirelessly and be monitored and controlled from anywhere. With integrated ports for temperature, pH, ORP, conductivity, and dissolved oxygen, you can monitor virtually anything. Built-in expansion ports and optional flow sensors allow the Profilux 4 to scale to meet the needs of even the most advanced aquarium installations without the need for additional add-on modules. The new GHL Doser 2.1 takes dosing to the extreme with integrated Wi-Fi for wireless management. It includes inputs for level sensors, a temperature probe, and an output for a magnetic stirrer making it an ideal solution for everything from dosing, automatic top-off, automated water changes, and even automated feeding. The GHL Mitras are the most powerful and flexible LEDs in their class. The 7206's built-in wireless control makes for fast and easy setup, while the GHL Light Composer allows users to easily set up their spectrum and lighting schedule. Six individual LED clusters provide the industry's best blending of LED channels while also providing the best spread. Nine channels of control allow you to tailor your lighting scheme to meet the needs of even the most difficult to keep corals while also bringing out colors in corals and fish that would otherwise remain unseen. All GHL products can be controlled via the GHL Control Center application as well as the My GHL Cloud interface allowing for monitoring, control, and management from anywhere via an internet connection. The unique interface eliminates the need for coding while providing advanced programming functionality unrivaled by the competition. If you're looking for the best controllers, dosers, and lighting on the market, then GHL has a product to fit your needs. For more information, visit AquariumComputer.com. Okay, it's now time to assemble the water pump discharge assembly, which consists of an adapter, PVC pipe, a T with two reducer bushings, ball valves, and hose barbs to connect to the flexible tubing. And there we go. I've got the entire water pump assembly uh, all assembled. The manifold with both the uh, connections and hose fittings at the ends. Uh, this be the uh, DC operated pump that will sit in the sump. So let's go ahead and position it inside the sump and get the controller hooked up. Okay, so the uh, water pump is in place. This would be again the uh, discharge manifold. Uh, the discharges into a T, one side of the T, passes up into the fitting into the underside of the uh, tank and enters into the tank. The other side of the T passes over to the chiller of which the t chiller returns into the sump uh, so there will always be a pool of cool uh, water in the sump being discharged up into the tank. Uh, now what I need to do is um, connect the controller for the DC pump which I think I'm going to position right around there. So having never operated this particular pump before I figured it might be wise to kind of give the uh, instructions a little quick read through. And so I've now got the water pump's controller hooked up with the cables plugged into it. It's not plugged into power yet. Uh, this unit will also interface with three or four other little pump controllers in what current refers to as their loop program, which is also a Bluetooth um, version. Uh, I don't have that many pumps or that need for that many pumps at this point, so I've just got the one. Now, what I think I need to do is go ahead and uh, cut that piece of PVC pipe, install the T with an additional uh, downspout and valve so I can begin uh, to fill the tank with water. So I've got the new fill line from the 300 gallon mixing uh, containers up front all hooked up. Uh, it runs itself into uh, the internal overflow 
uh, this being the big tank itself. 60 long, 30 wide, 20 tall. Uh, the overflow is uh, plumbed down into the top of the uh, sump, extra large sump. The DC water pump is in position with its discharge manifold, the portion going into the chiller, which returns back into the sump, and the balance going up through the return line, which comes out in the uh, face of the uh, internal overflow. So I believe that I am ready to um, do my first water test. So with my fingers crossed, I will go and start uh, filling up the internal overflow, which in turn will overflow down through the drain into the filter into the sump. Once I've got the sump about half full of water, I'll then turn on the water pump with the controller there, and I've got both the valves open so water will start going through the chiller. I'll also start going up into the tank, and from there we'll fine tune the flow so that the uh, rate that the water is coming in at will fill up the tank and we'll have this thing running. So with the flick of a switch, I can turn on the water pump from my dual 300 gallon RODI saltwater mixing containers and by opening and closing certain valves, I can begin to send that water back to my frag tanks And opening the new fill valve allows water to begin to spill into the overflow. Which in turn flows down into the sump through the Micron sock. And once the sump fills up, I can then plug in the water pump and adjust its controller to begin to pump water up to the tank. And so it appears as though the plumbing job we've done is solid because I see no drips, runs, or errors. Um, everything seems to be working as it was supposed to. Well, it's going to take a little while to um, fill up the sump. Uh, or should I say the tank, because we're filling up the sump, which in turn is filling up the tank. I do see one little drip over there on a um, ball valve going to the uh, chiller, so I'll probably work on that here in just a moment. Um, make sure to come on back for the next few episodes. Uh, our friend Scott will be here. He's going to be helping me install um, the automatic uh, top-off system and the Neptune monitoring system, uh, as well as the lighting. And our friend Condi is going to be here. Uh, he's picking up some uh, container rock for us. We're going to pressure wash it, and then we'll uh, do a structure inside the tank. So um, uh, make sure to come on back for those two episodes. And always, keep moving forward.